Hello and welcome to South Asia Today, a show that provides you the glimpses of South Asia. I'm your host Hina Joshi, here are the headlines. Activists blame Pakistan for human rights violations in Balochistan. India becomes fifth largest economy in the world. And youngsters in Nepal celebrate Utaku Jatra. Let's begin the show with Balochistan, where the people have constantly been the target of Pakistani establishment. The continuous and grave human rights violations in the province force the Baloch to live in consistent fear of Pakistan army and secret agencies. The Baloch political activists who have migrated abroad due to life threats have asked the international community to help Pakistan accountable about genocide of the Baloch. We have a report. The posters being displayed are of Baloch victims who have faced Pakistani atrocities. They have been forcibly disappeared by the Pakistan Army and notorious spy agency, the ISI. Baloch Voice Association, a Paris-based NGO, held a three-day poster protest in Geneva to highlight the rise in enforced disappearances in Balochistan, especially in the wake of the CPEC, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. CPEC has become one of the main sources of misery, exploitation and brutalities against local people. China, with the help of the Pakistani establishment, is exploiting resources in the province for its own advancement. A large number of security checkpoints have been set up by the Pakistani establishments in the province which have intensified human rights violations as security forces are picking up people in the name of security. Here on these banners and posters, we have a data, we have some graphics, uh, we have uh, some photos of the people who were victims of enforced disappearances. As per the claims of the Pakistani state, as per the claims of the Pakistani army, that they are abandoning the issue of enforced disappearances. But contrary to the data, the statistics which we have received from Vice for Baloch missing persons from the ground, which we have received from international organizations like COIED, that shows the, the number of issue of enforced dis disappearances has uh, increased tripled than to the prior year. Activists blame Pakistan along with China for unfairly exploiting Balochistan's rich gas and mineral resources under the grab of CPEC. They accuse the forces of arbitrarily detaining innocents for speaking out against atrocities and the CPEC. The human rights situation in Balochistan is witnessing an unprecedented decline as the state agencies of Pakistan are on a rampage. Baloch human rights activists recently held a day-long conference in Berlin to raise the issue of grave human rights violations in Balochistan and seek international attention. The conference was attended by Sindhi, Pashtun, Vigar and rights activists from across Europe. They highlighted that among the many issues the Baloch people face every day under Pakistani occupation, the most compelling ones are the enforced disappearances and fake encounters as part of Islamabad's kill and dump policy. They also blamed Pakistan army has been committing genocide of innocent Baloch people, raising concern over several cases of extrajudicial killings and rapes. Pakistani army and other security forces of Pakistan has been carrying out uh, genocide of the Baloch people. But this problem of the Balochistan and the, this uh, great genocide of the Baloch people is not coming into the international media. On the 51st session of UN General Assembly's uh, Human Rights Council's uh, session, we request the UN to send a fact-finding mission to Balochistan and uh, trial all those culprits who committed crimes against humanity uh, in Pakistani army and its secret services and they should uh, be trialed in uh, international court of justice. The situation in Balochistan has remained tense and volatile since Pakistan annexed the autonomous Baloch state of Kalat in 1948. The common people in the region have been experiencing various forms of human rights atrocities at the hands of the Pakistani state. 
The tension has been further escalated by Chinese investments under Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative, with the funds never reaching the locals. They are urging the international community to speak out against the atrocities as the world's silence is giving impunity to Pakistan. And now, we will take a look at how India has recently surpassed the United Kingdom to become the fifth largest economy and is still on the upward slope of development. As India commemorates 75 years of its independence, a new script is being written on the economic front. A tripartite foundation of a determined political will to take difficult decisions for the greater good, speedy implementation of fiscal objectives, and a science and technology-based development model have propelled India to the coveted top five economies of the world. India recently surpassed the United Kingdom to become the fifth biggest economy. The country's nominal GDP in the first quarter clocked over 854 billion USD against the United Kingdom's 816 billion USD in the same period. Among all major economies, India's growth at 3.83% in the three-year period is the highest, followed by the United States at 3.78%, Canada at 2.58%, the UK at 1.06%, France at 0.68%, and Japan at negative 1.27%. What is even more significant in this achievement is the fact that India reached these numbers at a time when the world was still struggling with the economic fallout of COVID-induced shocks. The Prime Minister used the challenge of the pandemic as an opportunity of the multiple rounds of economic reforms, which covered vast sectors of the economy, which has deeply enhanced the productivity, long-term productivity of the economy. Industrialists across the spectrum predict that by the end of the decade, India will enter the rarefied era of the top three economies of the world. The major components of the business support package included financial measures for micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. Instead of providing cash handouts, the additional support was provided in the form of concessional credits to farmers, as well as a credit facility for street vendors. India's incredible pace of immunization proved instrumental in its economic resurgence. After a sharp contraction in the first quarter since the COVID outbreak and a moderate contraction in the following months, the Indian economy registered a sharp V-shaped growth trajectory. The Production Linked Incentive Scheme PLI, was launched to develop an incentive-based model to boost domestic manufacturing. Analysts believe that PLI can contribute up to 4% to the GDP annually in terms of incremental revenue. Digital India led from the front during the COVID distress when India distributed nearly 5 billion USD in cash benefits to the impoverished, direct to their accounts. The country was already on a digital first trajectory with one of the highest volumes of digital transactions in the world when the pandemic struck and further propelled the use of contactless digital technology. India is now clocking around 100 million digital transactions a day with a volume of 67 billion USD, about a five times jump from 2016. A World Economic Forum 2020 report says the use of digital technology led to savings of nearly 23 billion USD 98% of this by eliminating erroneous beneficiaries. What it is uh, telling you in the broader context, leaving aside the UK the specific thing, is that India is moving up the power scale. And uh, according to uh, my earlier forecast, by uh, 28 to 30, we will become the third largest uh, country. Those who have invested in the India story have more to look forward to. The PM Gati Shakti is a master plan for coordinating implementation of infrastructure projects with around 16 ministries on board to coordinate seamless transportation of goods and other services. The scheme's rapid implementation is moving at the same pace of growth as the country's rapidly accelerating economy. It is also reducing travel time for people across the country. In addition to emphasis on building infrastructure projects like highways, bridges, ports and airports, the government is also giving priority to build special economic zones to provide an internationally competitive and hassle-free environment for exports. Reduction in restrictive compliances, a strong infrastructure foundation, an educated workforce and one of the largest markets in the world sends a strong message to investors around the world. 
India is open for business. Moving on. Fans of pop culture gathered for cosplay fest Otaku Jatra or Anime Festival in Kathmandu. They showed off costumes of their favorite unique characters, the products of hours of loving work and enjoyed their shared passion. Have a look. Dressed in their favorite comic costumes, these youngsters rejoiced to be a part of the annual cosplay festival also called Otaku Jatra. Launched almost a decade ago, the festival brings together pop culture elements such as anime and comics. Cosplay, which originated in Japan, is a combination of the words costume and play. It is an activity and performance art where participants wear costumes and fashion accessories to represent mostly fictional characters seen in anime. Pop culture fans dressed up as their favorite animated characters during the one-day fest. The enthusiastic mob was seen clicking pictures with their favorite cosplayers while getting their faces painted with popular characters. Most of the youngsters, especially the millennials and the Gen Z generation reaching adulthood in the second decade of the 21st century, are fond of the animated characters. I've been watching anime since I was in grade 8 and now I am in bachelor second year. I have been watching anime since like a kid I want even know so it's fun to watch and time passes fun you but it has become like a habit of watching anime it just brings joy in my life it is believed that the tradition of cosplay came out of the practice of fan costuming at science fiction conventions in new york in the early 20th century the japanese version of the animation anime is generally perceived as a cartoon which has multiple genres of romance, sci-fi, horror and many others. In contrast to the regular cartoons that have been playing on the channels, anime focus on real life issues or human emotions. The connecting stories from one episode to the other, like in the series, the stories of anime progress while the cartoons are made with an intention to make people laugh. The first anime ever released on TV Astro Boy was released in Japan around 1963. The anime is very popular in among youngsters because like they have different kind of you know you know behavior and they like to imagine so many things and uh, anime has made them to like have their imagination go far like uh, when they are alone they can have fun while watching animes and uh, some of them might have uh, some kind of that like they are might they might be introvert like you know it might be hard for them to make friends so maybe through anime they can make friends you know talk about anime the cosplay festival otaku jatra started in 2010 and has been growing over the years bringing together pop culture elements such as anime and comics there has been a growing popularity of cosplay festivals in recent years now let's take a look at a few happenings in Asia in our segment called Asia Watch. South Korea staged a large-scale live fire military demonstration as part of Defense Expo Korea 2022 near the demilitarized zone separating the two Koreas. Military vehicles, tanks, armored vehicles, multiple rocket launchers and attack helicopters were mobilized for the exercise at the Seongjin Fire Training Field in Poshion. The expo held at the Korea International Exhibition Center, where 350 exhibitors will showcase various products and technology related to defense and security such as weapon systems, unmanned systems, military equipment and counter-terrorism. Artificial intelligence is shaping humanity across nearly all spheres and industry. Japan's AI Insight is one of the most progressive artificial intelligence firms that provides artificial intelligence solutions to people and firms all over the world. The services provided by AI Insight include the DX suit, which enables digitizing formation from paper documents and analog data to digital ones. Uh, え、現在日本で 
ある場合に関して非常にデータ入力の作業に時間であったりとか人件費がかかっているケースがあるかなというふうに思ってまして特にそういった業界に関しては非常に業務効率化に寄与するようなプロダクトになっているかなというふうに思います。AI Inside was also selected as a part of the Asia Digital Transformation Project. The project aims to put digital innovation into practice in society in order to help Asian countries solve socio economic issues. AI Inside is becoming a major contributor toward a faster, more reliable, and more convenient source of information and technology all over the world. Theme parks around China have introduced a number of limited entertainment activities and increased package discounts as they look to entice more visitors ahead of the expected tourist peak during the upcoming National Day holiday. At the Universal Beijing Resort, a whole host of energetic set piece performances that incorporate a variety of movie roles kicked off recently at the park's Hollywood Boulevard. Visitors can experience a simulated movie shooting site and even try their hand at becoming actors, actresses, or even directors. With the Universal Resort making the one year anniversary of its opening, figures show the park has attracted over 13.8 million visitors over the past year, with more than 68,000 performances, totaling some 14,000 hours staged at the time period. This is a racing car designed and manufactured by a young university student who aims to become an engineer. The Formula SAE Japan 2022 is an opportunity for students to develop skills for object creation, monozukuri, which will contribute to the expansion of the industry. A total of 69 teams will enter the competition and participate in various events for five days. 車あとその作った車をどう売るかっていうプレゼンテーション、えー、あとはその車を作るのにどれぐらいの価格が必要だったかっていうコストっていう性的な審査とあと今今日やっている、えー、走行のテストの2種目で大きく争っています。Japanese car and parts manufacturers are sponsoring the event and team to help train young car engineers. The Kyoto Institute of Technology team is known to be a strong team and has 66 members. The team is adjusting the racing car for the endurance race for the last day of the competition. Young engineers, backed up by automotive giants and first hand industry experience, will become a major participant and contributor to the automotive industry on the global level. A top Indian government official inaugurated a multi screen cinema hall in Srinagar, the largest city in Kashmir region. And it will begin showing movies next month, more than two decades after cinemas were closed there. Inox, an Indian multiplex chain, is establishing the 520 seat hall with three screens in Srinagar, the summer capital of the Jammu and Kashmir region that has been at the forefront of an insurrection by militants since 1989. Srinagar had over a dozen single screen cinema halls operational until, but a majority were forced to shut down after warnings from militant and separatist groups. The last cinema hall closed in 1999. Lieutenant Governor of Jammu and Kashmir, Manoj Sinha, also inaugurated two cinema halls in Shopia and Pulwama. Sinha has earlier said the federal government under Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was determined to establish fresh economic opportunities in the region. Jammu and Kashmir, a popular tourist destination, is one of the most beautiful places on earth. There are a ton of tourists who come here annually from both India and abroad. Tourism is the state's second largest economic sector after agriculture. To increase tourism in Aharbal, the Kulgam District Administration organized Aharbal Mela in the area to promote tourism in the valley. Have a look. After being stagnant for about three years, the tourism sector in Jammu and Kashmir has picked up pace with record footfall of tourists this year. The JNK Tourism Department has constantly been taking steps to promote areas that have the potential of becoming a great tourism magnet. 
One such area is that of Aharbal in Kulgam district, which boasts of lush green grounds and waterfall. Recently, the Kulgam district administration organized Aharbal Mela in the area to promote the beautiful destination as a tourist place. ये हम पिछले साल से हम लोग ये इवेंट्स ऑर्गेनाइज कर रहे हैं कुलगाम में स्पेशली जो ऑफ बीट डेस्टिनेशन है जो कि ऑनरेबल अलजी साहब ने अहरबल को एक ऑफ बीट डेस्टिनेशन बनाया है जिसमें हम लोग कोशिश करते हैं कि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा टूरिस्ट्स को यहाँ पर इसमें यहाँ पर वो आए यहाँ की खूबसूरती को देखें और जो यहाँ के जो यहाँ का इकॉनमी है जो कि टूरिस्ट टूरिज़म के साथ लिंक है उसको बढ़ावा दें Organized near the Aharbal Waterfall Park, the fair witnessed the participation of people from different walks of life along with many tourists who visited the valley. The first edition of the festival was organized last year which received an amazing response from locals as well as tourists. Multiple stalls were also installed by various departments including agriculture, horticulture, sheep, animal husbandry, tourism, khadi and village industries board, apiculture, floriculture and handicrafts. A number of entrepreneurs also set up their stalls to promote their business in the valley. Handloom products were also at display that promoted the local traditions and culture of Kashmir. हमारा जो यह है ये डाइट कुलगाम की तरफ से है डाइट कुलगाम बेसिकली एक इंस्टीट्यूशन है जो टीचर्स को ट्रेन करता है और बच्चों को जो बच्चों को जो अवेयर करता है तो हमने ये मुनासिब समझा कि हम ये स्टार यहाँ पर लगा दें ताकि हमारी आने वाली पौध जो है हमारे जो आने वाले बच्चे जो यंगस्टर्स हैं वो ये समझें कि हमारा हमारे हमारे रूट्स क्या थे हमारी वरासत क्या थी हम कहाँ से आए हमारे पेरेंट्स मतलब क्या करते थे तो इस चीज़ में टूरिज्म का अगर आप देखेंगे कि हमारा हेरिटेज रूम है कुलगाम में डाइट में ही एक रूम है बड़ा हाल है हेरिटेज जिसमें हमने ये सारे आइटम्स रखे हैं जो आपके सामने हैं ये आइटम्स जो हैं इनसे काफ़ी बच्चों ने ये कि मतलब फ़ायदा नहीं कहेंगे हम के उनको इंस्पायर हो गए A number of competitions were also organized at the fair where students from various schools participated. A painting competition was held which attracted a lot of tourists. Also groups of young boys participated in cycling and trekking events that were flagged off by Dr Bilal Moyuddin Bhatt the deputy commissioner of Kulgam उन्होंने ये एक अच्छा कदम उठाया जैसा कि आप भी इस बात से बखूबी वाकिफ हैं कि अभी तक यहाँ पे दो फेस्टिवल्स हो गए एक लास्ट ईयर हुआ था अहरबल फेस्टिवल इसके उसके बाद यहाँ पे हुआ था विंटर फेस्टिवल और आज ये फिर 2022 का जो हुआ यहाँ पे अरब फेस्टिवल इसका जो जहाँ तक मुझे नॉलेज है आपने भी देखा होगा रिसेंटली जो यहाँ की अहरबल डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी ने एक फिगर दिया था कि लाखों में लोग जो हैं बाहरी स्टेट से यहाँ पे विजिट करने के लिए आए यहाँ पे घूमने के लिए आए तो ये इस बात की अक्सी करता है कि जो डीसी साहब का डिस्ट्रिक्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन कुलगाम का टूरिज़म डिपार्टमेंट का ये एहसन इकदाम कदम था ये रंग ला रहा है दिन ब दिन अच्छा फेस्टिवल चल रहा है तो हम लोग नीचे भी गए वहाँ पर जो वाटरफॉल है वहाँ का इन्जॉय किया बहुत अच्छे सीनरीज थे उसके अलावा यहाँ पर जो ये भी शॉप्स लगी हुई हैं स्टॉल्स लगे हुए हैं और बच्चे यहाँ आए हुए हैं स्कूल के वो लोग जो एंजॉय कर रहे हैं जो उनकी एक्टिविटी चल रही हैं उसको हमने एंजॉय किया जो लोग फॉरेन जाते हैं विदेश जाते हैं वो यहाँ आकर देखें कितना सुंदर है हमारा कश्मीर और कितने अच्छे लोग हैं यहाँ के कितना प्यार है सब कुछ आपको यहाँ देखने को मिलेगा और महसूस करने को मिलेगा तो आप सब यहाँ आएँ और इसको अधिक से अधिक लोगों के बीच आ के उनको बताएँ कि हम लोग एक हैं और हमारा हिंदुस्तान एक है और सबसे प्यारा हिंदुस्तान हमारा है The district administration is making concerted and coordinated efforts to promote potential tourism destinations like Aharbal. Tourism will not only increase the economy of the region as well as the state but will provide employment opportunities for the unemployed youth and make them independent. It's time for me to wrap up today's episode. We will be back next week at the same time. This is Hina Joshi signing off on behalf of the entire production team of South Asia today. Goodbye and take care.